everyone welcome to the good health show today we are going to talk about a topic which is actually underrated but should be overrated today we have dr shamji with us thank you doctor for your valuable time my major question or the public major question what we got is what is pcod and what is pcos are these two things same or they are different from each other Right, this is a very good and a valid question. A very commonly confused two terms. They are interchangeable. PCOD is nothing but polycystic ovarian disorder, and PCOS is nothing but polycystic ovarian syndrome. In PCOD, we only see release of some immature eggs or appearance of polycystic ovaries, whereas in PCOS, we see it as a syndrome. There are multiple hormones that are involved. There can be multiple symptoms that are seen through the reproductive age. and that it is also a reproductive disorder where uh, problems like infertility can be seen in women with PCOS but this PCOD is only uh, diagnosed maybe through imaging like ultrasound or it is diagnosed as simply as a, a, a symptom or release of immature eggs so doctor these PCOD and PCOS as we talked have different uh, you know different variations and it might affect every female in a different way Say we can say the menstrual cycle, hormone imbalance, and then maybe uh, increase in testosterone. So a lot of other things. So does it affect the pregnancy also? And what are the like what are the effect on female's body in all over? If anybody is you know affecting with these two things, right, right. So coming to the symptoms of PCOD. Now it is said that as many as a uh, uh, 90% of the reproductive age females can have uh, this possibility of having PCOD. Probably that one, say one in uh, every ten women is already suffering from PCOS. Having to know that many different uh, people have different sorts of symptoms that they can start with. The most common symptoms that are diagnostic that that say that this will be PCOS are uh, excessive hair growth on the body. That is hirsutism. Hirsutism is very common in reproductive age group. Second is irregular uh, menstrual cycle or what we call oligo or anovulation. Uh, in that we see that there is an irregular uh, pattern of uh, menstrual cycle which may be absent for a couple of months it may be erratic or may be prolonged for more than 4 days one week uh, depending on how the symptoms vary from one person to another and for uh, in the most important part to diagnose all of this we should have a polycystic appearance on the ultrasound so these criteria we want we differentiate Uh, PCOS, or we diagnose and label a person having PCOS that is polycystic ovarian syndrome. Now, along with hirsutism, uh, there is also insulin resistance that is developed in the body. Because of the insulin resistance developed, we a lot of times see obesity, which is very common. And obesity uh, later on has other uh, implications, which may be severe, which may cause uh, type two in a lot of uh, females, which may cause some amount of infertility. Which may have problems in conceiving, or which may have complications during the pregnancy. So, doctor, uh, some major questions what we were asked on uh, by the public was uh, that some females have asked the question that they do not end up having no menstrual cycle for two to three months, and when they have it, it lasts for fifteen days or say even more. So, how e- these things even affect? Does these things even affect the pregnancy in the future? If somebody is having the same thing at an early age, because I think the age having this strictly right. for that. Right. So PCOS very recently has been studied to be strongly linked to infertility. Uh, again, the same reason being that there there are irregular periods, there there is an ovulation that means there is not enough release of eggs, or maybe the egg, release of eggs is very irregular for every cycle. Depending on that, the quality of eggs could decrease. That makes it even uh, more complicated and challenging for pregnancy to be conceived. Also, just not that because of uh, some estrogen and progesterone secretion disturbances, wherein we see very little amount of progesterone being released and maybe some high amount of estrogen that is coming out, which affects the uterus lining. That can eventually cause a, a miscarriage as well. That can cause difficulty in conception. So early diagnosis of PCOD is very important because that is how we start the treatment. We make sure that the quality of eggs improves. We make sure that the endometrial lining or the uterus lining is uh, well uh, in shape before we plan any conception in the future. But infertility is a big challenge in PCOS, and hence it requires a timed uh, manual treatment. So, doctor, as you said in your early answers and discussions, what we were doing. 
that out of every 10 women, at least one or two people are, two females are having PCOT or PCOS. Do you think it has been increased in the time span of these years? And why would it increase day by day? You know, every third woman I know, or maybe you know, comes up to you with the PCOD and PCOS thing. So I just want to ask that why is it increasing that? You know, why is it spreading like a fire within the women? Right, right. So uh, again, a very important question and a very challenging question for all, for all the doctors and all the medical fraternity. PCOS has been a challenge for a long time, but ever since it has been so common. We have got to know a lot of new things that we did not know about the disease earlier. So most of the times now we've concluded that environmental factors play a very vital role in the occurrence of PCOD. Environmental factors may include our lifestyle, that, that includes a sedentary lifestyle. Obesity we gain through excessive uh, uh, intake of fats in the diet, excessive intake of uh, processed food in our diet has caused a lot of changes in the hormones. Uh, not just that, the environmental factors like air pollution, water pollution, all of that has some amount to play in uh, insulin resistance, thus developing PCOD. And also that a lot of times genetic factors have seen to play an important role. So maybe if somebody in the family, if a sibling or a mother is suffering from PCOS or has been suffering from PCOS earlier, there are likely chances that you would have it in your other or coming generations. So, are PCOD and PCOS affecting even young girls? The age has been decreased now. Earlier, I think it was maybe, if I'm not wrong, the ages were between say mid twenties to the later thirties, and now it has been increased to the mid, oh, you know, the teenage, which is 16, 17, and you know, it's going on and on. So, is it because of the food habits, or it's just genetic? Okay. So again, it is very common that we see. PCOD or PCOS like appearance in just after the menstrual cycle start to begin, that is menarche, menarche when it starts, your, your ovaries can have polycystic appearance. However, that may not be a uh, syndrome, that may not have other symptoms like excessive hair growth or obesity or insulin resistance. But since the last few years, we have seen that uh, polycystic ovarian syndrome has started as early as maybe. Uh, 16 or 18 years of age and has it is seen up to maybe 35 years of age at women. So the entire uh, major reproductive age of a woman PCOS is a big challenge. Yes, again, environmental factors uh, play a big role because environmental factors have always been a major factor in developing insulin resistance. Obesity has been a major factor for infertility. Uh, ever since type 2 diabetes uh, started coming in our country and our country is a capital of type 2 diabetes. So ever since that a lot of things were linked, especially in the reproductive age of people. And we've seen that PCOS very commonly later on has been uh, one of uh, the reasons of environmental changes and the factors that have affected our bodies. So is it only the menstrual cycle? Or sometimes it's like I know of people whose menstrual cycle has but then they have some skin problems like skin sensitivity and then you have the hormonal changes, the hair growth, like the male hair growth. I myself had the PCOD because I was earlier very obese, I was 90 and then I came back to 56 but still my uh, periods were never affected but then the facial growth um, and then you can say uh, the sensitive skin. So does it like necessary that only the period cycle gets affected or either the period cycle doesn't get affected but still you end up having this? Right, right. So I think you are a very good example of how you, how one should reverse their lifestyle and how uh, weight loss really uh, is one of the treatments for PCOS, still one of the primary treatments for PCOS. But yes, not everyone will have the same kind of complaints that each individual have. Like we said, we have a criteria set to be called, to be labelled PCOS in which we need to have a regular menstrual cycle or we need to have some amount of uh, male hormone dominance like she said that facial hair are very common, facial hair and unusual areas like chin uh, and thick amount of hair, unusual areas like chin, maybe side dogs, maybe some part of the body where it is not usual, chest areas or back areas. So, hirsutism is one of the very common symptoms 
probably the preliminary symptoms that a PCOS female comes up with. Along with that, acne. Acne is also challenging because of the increase in the testosterone level in the body. Not just that, hair loss or male pattern balding is seen in females because of the excess testosterone that they see. Uh, other than that, there is weight gain, there is insulin resistance, there is darkening of skin, especially at the creases of neck, underarms, maybe overall skin darkening is seen in a lot of women. So, not necessarily all these symptoms will be put together if the every individual who presents to us with PCOS. But if each of them uh, concludes or investigations conclude to come out with PCOS, then we start the treatment accordingly, which involves uh, trying to control the male hormone secretion that, that is a major cause of uh, hair growth or weight gain or acne that happens. So Dr. Ajay, we were talking about PCOS and PCOS. So some people, some girls are really scared to have it. It's a positive disease if they are scared to have it. So uh, the questions which every female wants to ask that is it curable? Can we lead to a normal life, normal pregnancy, normal menstrual cycle? With medicines or without medicines, is it like possible to have like a normal straight on life? PCOS is going to be very common in the coming days. We are going to see a lot of women get affected with PCOS. But also it is important to know that the diagnosis of the disease is the key to the treatment also. The earlier that we catch the symptoms that look abnormal, uh, the better it is for the treatment for the line of action that we going to take place in uh, individuals. And also it is, uh, I, I, with every individual, every patient, the treatment is going to be different. Every patient comes with different uh, challenges and different uh, disease uh, form. But it is not that the treatment is the same for everyone. However, the most uh, kept primary treatment that we use in most of the patients is uh, we ask them to make lifestyle modifications that involves exercise, that involves healthy eating, a diet that is full of uh, fruits, vegetables, uh, enough amount of proteins, less amount of processed and ultra processed food that most of us have nowadays. And other than that, uh, when we when we start the treatment, we make sure that. They respond to the treatment well and that is how we titrate the treatment. So not necessarily everyone needs a lifelong or a prolonged duration of treatment. But uh, it can be that a lot of times patients respond to the medicines quicker than uh, the other patients. And hence we uh, modify the treatment and we make sure that the cycles become regular. Their testosterone levels are under, under control. Their symptoms which are due to excess testosterone are under control, they are responding with good weight loss and that is how we see that patients if they are uh, responsive to the treatment then probably we stop the treatment after a few months or days depending on how the patient responds. So it's not a lifetime thing, like a lifetime medicine, lifetime treatment, it can be treated with years or months or it just needs a lot of efforts like oh, gym, food, is it always like you have to be in that part or it's just curable with some amount of time given to it properly and then it's you are good to go for a normal life. Right. Like I said, the first ever thing that we will tell the patient when the patient enters our OPD room is going to be that you have to uh, make sure that you lose weight. And we have seen that at least 5% of the weight loss of the total body weight in case you are obese. Uh, has shown improvement, drastic improvement in the symptoms of PCOD without any medications. So only weight loss and healthy diet has been the focus ever since PCOS PCOD was diagnosed. So uh, lifestyle modifications being the pre preliminary uh, area where we need to work, we need to start working maybe as early as our teenage. And it is always better to have that kind of a lifestyle where it involves at least 30 to 60 minutes of workout or any form of exercise every day. Uh, a diet which is full of uh, lentils, whole grains, leafy greens, fruits, uh, things with a lot of antioxidants, maybe uh, dairy, maybe uh, healthy lean meat. Uh, so all of this when put together, we have seen that there is a, there is a drastic improvement in the symptoms of obesity. Not just that, we also prevent them from the complications. So like she said, like she asked if PCOD is going to stay with us like long. But yes, PCOD may have, PCOS may have some complications like type 2 diabetes, some complications like infertility, some complications even like high cholesterol levels, high blood pressure levels. In the future, if the disease is not controlled, if the weight is not controlled, if we do not take care of our diet well, all these complications can trigger 
uh, later when we grow, when we uh, age and that is why we need to be careful and we need to make sure that we maintain the kind of lifestyle changes that we always encourage our patients to do.